Good morning. So today uh, we start with this brief article and try to understand the time evolution, how time evolves if you are given a wave function or a free particle. Now, uh, note that when we say we have a free particle, we mean that it is force free, there is no force acting on that. So, a uh, free particle in one dimension. In 1D, the particle has got a Hamiltonian which is given by H is equal to T e square by 2A. So P is of course the linear momentum in one dimension. And if you want to write down, uh, uh, if you want to write down an operator, so if you choose your position. Position basis. So the position basis is given by set of all vectors like this. That x belongs to set of real numbers. So every point on the real line is a vector or a ket vector. And this is uh, kind of an uncountable infinity. So the dimension of this vector space is uncountable infinity. And in this position basis, the momentum operator has a correspondence with a differential operator, which is given by h bar by i into d by. So wherever you have to talk about momentum operator, you have to talk about. Now, uh, Eigen states, that is, if you are trying to solve h psi of x is equal to e into psi of x, this is basically the eigenvalue problem that you have to solve for any particular problem where h is the Hamiltonian operator. And you can see that this psi will depend on something called k which is equal to some a into e to the power i k x. Okay, so this is basically a plane wave as we have talked about earlier. And here, the momentum of this particle, the particle is given by h bar k. So it is related to h bar k, uh, momentum is related to h bar k, or is equal to h bar k. Now here this k is called uh, quantum number. It can be discrete or it can be continuous, but it is called a quantum number. So it is customary to represent the wave function where the quantum number is written as a subscript and the variable is written in the bracket. Okay, so in Dirac notation, Dirac notation, what we do is we simply write down the psi k of x as the projection of a ket k onto the x. So Dirac state is simply represented as a ket, where inside the ket you have the quantum number. Okay, so, so the kets in Dirac notation are represented with the quantum number. Okay. So just to give you another example, uh, in the previous class, we have talked about uh, practical in a one-dimensional box. 
article in 1D box is we had psi n of x is equal to so the box let's say is 0 to a is equal to root 2 by a sine n pi by a into x okay so this is the coordinate basis wave function of the particle in a box energy eigen state this is fine but in dirac the so dirac ket associated with this one is represented as n because this n is the quantum number n is the quantum number so that this can be written as the projection of this n along the x direction so this is how we represent um, states in dirac notation as well as in the coordinate basis notation okay so uh, you can see that the this particular psi k of x is a plane wave and it is also a an eigenstate or eigenfunction of this hamiltonian so note that psi k of x is equal to a into e to the power i k x is an eigenfunction function of uh, of the three particle Hamilton. H is equal to B square by 2. And what should be the eigenvalue? The eigenvalue given by, call it as EK, that is equal to H bar square K square by Q. So this is the energy eigenvalue. So we say that uh, H I K of X is equal to E K I K of X, where I K of X is equal to A into E to the power I K X and E K is equal to h bar square k square by k. So this is the problem. Or we have talked about the solution for a free particle problem. But then we have uh, not addressed one very important uh, issue here. For example, I have been writing uh, a into e power i k x. Now we ask the question, what is a? So what is a? A is this. Now how do we generally find out this a? I want you to recall when we did the particle in a box. We have tried to normalize this wave function. Okay. So normalization. Normalization gives A in general. Whereas in this particular case, you will see, suppose if I try to normalize this wave function, so consider A square into psi k star of x 
So I don't have a square here. Psi k star of x into psi of a, psi k of x dx. This should be equal to one. This is the normalization condition. Now, when we can say this is equal to one, if this is some finite quantity, we can always write this a to be that one by that finite quantity. Right. So, but notice that uh, notice that a square minus infinity to infinity psi k star is e to the minus i k x psi k is e to the i k x e x that is equal to a square into minus infinity to infinity dx. And this is not finite. This goes to infinity. So that means psi k of x, psi k of x is not in this L2 of R. Okay. So uh, it's not square integral. Not square integrable are equivalently not normalizable. Not normalizable. So, how can we use this as a, a wave function for a particle? So, now um, one can try in two ways. Okay, so there is one way which was introduced by Bond. Okay, so this is what we can call it as Bond way. And this is also called something called a box normalization. So the first one called box normalization. Now here you assume that assume that uh, the particle basically the free particle is confined to a line segment of length L. Okay, so then what happens is that uh, if you assume that uh, since it is confined and outside this length the particle is zero, so instead of minus infinity to plus infinity, you simply will have zero to L. Okay, so a square is zero to l dx will be equal to a square times l, and you call that to be equal to one. That implies your a can be written as one by square root of l. So, uh, so what you do is that uh, use psi k of x is equal to 1 by root l into e power i k x okay, in calculations. So use this wave function in calculations. Okay, And if you have no reason to believe that there is any confinement for this particle, okay, and you want to you want to have infinite length. That means it is there everywhere in the x-axis or in the real line. Like that, if you you want to get a result for that, use this in the calculations and take l tending to infinity limit 
in the result whatever the result of your calculation in that result you take this limit now if this limit exists then you have an answer corresponding to uh, corresponding to this one or physically if you have a reason to believe that there is a confinement then you this this whatever results you are getting with this wave function will be uh, exact results so that is one way this is called a box normalization okay so i think there is another way um, so this is basically um this is assuming that you assume that this uh, so let's say there is some 0 to l okay but uh, you try to mimic that is uh, mimic mimic infinite uh infinite length by identifying the end points of a finite segment okay so this is sometimes is called periodic boundary conditions periodic boundary conditions okay so what does that mean that means that your psi k psi k of x plus l should be equal to psi k of that means what goes out from here will come in from here so that is so that means this and this are identified okay this is like in that case it will become like a ring okay so if you do that then you have a into um psi k of x plus l oh uh, i'm sorry this is not going to give you a so this is only going to give you some allowed values of k okay, so this gives you allowed values of k so let us not keep it a part of this discussion so this one is going to give you so this gives so this is a boundary condition use allowed values of k how does it give allowed values of k so this implies e to the power a into e to the power i k x plus l is equal to e a into e to the power i k x so that Necessary says that e to the power i k l should be equal to that. It implies your k l should be equal to 2 pi n. Or in other words, your k will be 2 pi by l times l. So these are the allowed values of k, and that will give you. Um, that is, uh, yesterday we talked about uh, particle in a box. If you have uh, the boundary condition that uh, the wave function should vanish at both boundaries, then you got one allowed values of k. But if you assume that they are periodic boundary conditions, you get some other value of k. So this is not uh, to normalize. Okay, so keep this as another way of getting quantization. Because this is a boundary condition. So there is another uh, way in which you can normalize this wave function. This is called uh, uh, extended 
extended normalization. Okay. And I don't know who has uh, given this, probably Dirac, not very sure. But that doesn't matter. But uh, here, what we use is uh, Dirac delta function. So we have seen that. Um, suppose I have a Dirac delta function, delta of x minus x prime. Now I will say that my wave function, that is, I, I will consider, let's say I consider uh, psi k of x star into psi k of x prime. Uh, okay, so let me put it this way. This is a little bit, we can understand this carefully. So now let us recall some of the things about this basis. So we know that uh, integral minus infinity to infinity dx x x is equal to identity. And this is what we called as completeness completeness of the basis coordinate basis okay so this is identity when we talked about basis of position and momentum operators we have uh, talked about this now orthogonality that means if you take x prime and x the orthogonality is defined by using a Dirac delta x x prime okay so now what happens at x equal to x prime it is not one but it is a Dirac delta function so if we allow this one then we can write that um, So in general, one of the way in which we can see this Dirac delta function, so one of the realizations of Dirac delta function is delta of x minus x prime can be written as 1 over 2 pi into integral e to the power i k of x minus x prime e k. So, how do we write this? It's very simple. So, let us say I have Dirac delta function. So, let's write down what is the Fourier transform of Dirac delta function. Fourier transform of x minus x prime. I hope you have learned Fourier transform. So, that is given by, uh, that is equal to 1 by square root of 2 pi integral delta of x minus x prime into e to the power minus i k x minus infinity. This is the Fourier transform of the Dirac delta function. Okay. So let us call that as some delta tilde of k. Let's call it like that. But that is equal to 1 over square root of 2 pi into e to the power mi minus i k x prime. 
the delta function integration is wherever x is there, you have to put x. Okay. So now let us ask what is the inverse Fourier transform of delta tilde of k? Okay. That is equal to 1 over root 2 pi integral minus infinity to infinity delta tilde of k into e power i k x e. But what is delta tilde of k is given by this and what should this be equal to? Because we have taken Fourier transform and it's inverse Fourier transform. So this has to be equal to Dirac delta function delta x minus x. So this you substitute this delta k delta tilde k here then you will get delta of x minus x prime is equal to 1 by 2 pi the integral minus infinity to infinity e to the power i k x minus x prime e k. Okay, so that is the expression that I have written here. Okay, so now if we if we write this now i am going to say that this expression okay so this expression i can write it as 1 by 2 pi into integral e to the power i k x prime the star into e to the power i k x Okay, so now what this is, what this is according to our uh, our uh, so if you look at our psi k here, okay, so this is like uh, um, so this is like psi k, right? So like one by two pi. And I have psi k of x prime star. Of course, there will be uh, a, a sitting here and psi k of x by a. E. Why? Because since psi k of x is equal to a into e to the i k x. That is what we have defined that one. So now I am writing e power i k x as I take this k here denominator. Okay. So now what should this a be? So that now suppose this factor one by one by two pi that is there. I want to uh, I want to get it inside. So that I will have. So if I if I choose if I choose a to be equal to one by square root of two pi. If I choose a to be one by square root of two pi, then what happens? Then we have integral minus infinity to infinity psi k star of x prime psi k star of x prime into psi k of x e k this is like sum over k okay so that is equal to that is equal to delta of x minus x prime so if i allow this one then this kind of a normalization is called extended normalization. So if you have this extended normalization, then we get this psi k of x as 1 over root 2 pi into e power i k. Okay, so this is uh, extended normalization or it is called delta function normalization. And it is this normalization that is used 
mostly per position basis because this is also uh, i mean con is consistent with the fourier transform definition of fourier transform okay so let us uh, now uh, summarize this so in position basis in position basis energy energy eigen functions of a free particle energy eigen functions of a free particle are given by psi k of x is equal to 1 over square root of 2 pi into e to the power i k x with e k the values of energy is given by h bar square k square Okay, so this is fine. Now you ask a question. If this is the energy eigenstate, how does it uh, evolve in time? Okay, so this is, let's say, this is the eigenstate. Okay, so let's say psi k of x comma 0 is given by 1 by root 2 pi to e power i k x then psi k of x comma t as we have seen earlier with respect to schrodinger evolution is same as 1 by root 2 pi e to the power i k x into e to the power minus i by h cross e k into t so e k is given by this so this is the time evolution. If you know the state at time t, and you know this is the going, this is going to be the state at a later time. Uh, at time t equal to zero, if you know this is the time evolution at a later time t. Okay. So, but now in general, it is not necessary that you have. Uh, particle always in some stationary state. Okay, so let us look at uh, uh, a general problem. Okay, so let's say in general, in general, a free particle wave function. may be a superposition superposition of the stationary states which we often call as some wave pack so it may be some kind of a wave pack okay so we would be interested in asking a question suppose so let us say that uh, let psi uh okay maybe i call it as some phi phi of x comma zero is equal to a into e to the minus a x square be the wave function wave function of uh, of a free particle at 
Isso, isso. Now the question is find phi of x comma t for some p greater than zero. So if this is the kind of a task that you have to do, then first you notice that um, so first you notice that uh, Notice that uh, well, let us split this it into some steps. First, notice that phi of x zero is not an eigenfunction. It's not an eigenfunction of x. Or free particle, of course, because this is a, given that it's a wave function of a free particle. So you can operate p square by 2m on this and notice that it will not be an eigenfunction of uh, this Hamiltonian operator. So that means it is not a stationary state. It is it is a non-stationary state. Okay, non-stationary. Okay, now how do we uh, expand this in the stationary states? So we uh, to find time evolution. Okay, so that is the second step. To find phi of x comma t, we have to We have to express phi of x comma zero in terms of in terms of stationary states. Because stationary states we have already found out, so we should be able to write them in terms of stationary. That means phi of x. That means what? Our phi of x comma zero. Now k is also uh, kind of a continuous variable. So instead of summation, I must now do an integration. Integration over uh, so the coefficient will also be a function of k now. So let me call that as some phi tilde of k. Phi tilde of k into what are the psi k of x? So this is how we have to uh, represent. These are stationary states. So for each k, there will be a coefficient, and that is what I will call it as phi tilde k, minus infinity to plus. So if you write this explicitly, this is 1 over square root of 2 pi integral minus infinity to infinity phi tilde of k into e to the power i k x e k. So if you know the language of Fourier transform, this is like uh, inverse Fourier transform of phi tilde k. So what will be phi tilde k? Phi tilde k is essentially that implies phi tilde k is equal to 1 over square root of 2 pi into integral phi of x comma 0 into e power minus i k x dx. So this is Fourier transform of phi, phi, uh, phi of x comma 0. So the coefficient of expansion coefficient of expansion is essentially a Fourier transform of phi of x here. Okay. So uh, 
I think we have now all the formalism to work with. So once you do this, okay, once you do this, then when you are trying to operate a unitary evolution operator, that unitary evolution operator will act only on this one. It will not act on this. So this is each. We already know how how e power i k x changes with time. Well, that we have already found out here. This is how it changes with time. So you substitute that one there, and you evaluate pi tilde f k, and then do this integration to get what is the uh, time dependence of this pi f x. Okay, so the calculation is uh, straightforward. Some careful bookkeeping is needed, but otherwise calculation is straightforward. You have to do a couple of integrals. So before that, first let us find out the normalization constant. So in the so we have re, uh, formulated it. Now find find a the normalization constant. Okay. So, how will you find A? You know that uh, pi of x comma 0 is equal to A into e to the minus kx square. So, you say that integral minus infinity to infinity pi of x comma 0 modulus square dx is equal to 1. That implies A square into integral minus infinity to infinity e to the minus strictly mod a square e to the minus uh, 2ax square e. Okay. So you know that, um, so let us call x times root a root 2a be some y so that dx is equal to dy by root 2a. So this integral can now be written as mod a square into 1 by root 2a the integral minus infinity to infinity e to the minus y square dy but this is this integral is root pi okay so if you do not know how to show this is root pi so please try this we to show that integral minus infinity to infinity e to the minus y square dy is equal to root so you can realize this by either using the definition of gamma function or you can also directly integrate the square of this integral and then convert that into polar coordinates and then do this. you use any one of those. So thus we have a mod a square into root pi by 2a is equal to 1 or that implies a is equal to 2a by pi to the power 1 by 4. So we have found out a, but let's continue to write this as a because writing this expression 2a by pi to the power 1 by 4 is always extra writing. So we know that what a is, so we can come back and pick up this expression when we want, but let's continue to write it as a. So what is the next step? Well, the next step is to uh, calculate calculate or find phi tilde of k and phi tilde of k. So look at the expression for phi tilde of k. Phi tilde of k expression is Phi tilde is a Fourier transform of phi of x zero. So phi tilde k 
is equal to so let me write down this a outside minus infinity to infinity to the minus a x square and then we have this e to the minus e to the minus i k x e so that is all that i have here so that uh, gives me that i write this as a minus infinity to infinity e to the minus a x square plus i k x now these integrals are uh, can be converted into gaussian integrals by a process called completing the squares okay so how do we do that so procedure called completing the square it is an interesting procedure and maybe some of you have learnt it in your school for example if you have ax square plus bx plus c is equal to 0 is a general quadratic equation then you know x is written as minus b plus minus square root of b square minus 4ac divided by b. This is something which you know as a uh, how how to find out the roots of a quadratic equation okay, using these radicals. But then this equation is obtained by completing the squares. So let us try to understand how it is done. So first you write this as, so this equation can be written as x square plus b by a times x plus c by a is equal to. Now consider this part and then try to write this as some x plus alpha the square minus alpha square. What is the advantage of writing this? This is x square plus 2 alpha x plus alpha square and minus alpha square will go away. So this is basically x square plus 2 alpha x. Now compare this expression with this. Okay, Then you know it is b by a into. Okay, So what I am trying to say is this expression is uh, this expression is x square plus 2 alpha x this expression is this x square term is there 2 alpha x term is d by a so from that i can find out alpha is equal to d by 2 e. okay so now using this i can write i can write this x square plus b by a into x plus c by a is equal to 0 can be written as x plus b by 2a the whole square minus alpha square that is b square by 4a square plus c by a is equal to 0. Now I can take uh, this part on the other side that is x plus b by 2a whole square can be written as b square by 4a square minus c by a or in other words this can be written as b square minus 4ac by 4a square okay so now if i want to write down what is x plus b by 2a that will be equal to plus minus square root of b square minus 4ac divided by 4a square and take 
it is on the other side. So x will be equal to minus b by 2a plus minus square root of b square minus 4ac divided by 2h. Okay, so this is the expression that we use. So even though this is something which you have learned in school, I just wanted to say that this simple technique is what we will use here all completing the squares. So now what I'm going to do here is that uh, this, I can, call, I can, I don't know, maybe I can pull out A, it doesn't matter. So let's say A times X square plus IK by A into X. Okay, I want to write this as a times x plus alpha the square minus alpha square. So what should be 2 alpha x? Okay, so here 2 alpha x is equal to ik by a into x. So that tells you your alpha is equal to ik by 2a. Okay, so we have found out this alpha. So once we find out this alpha, then I can write down a times x square plus ik by a into x is equal to a times x plus ik by 2a, the whole square, okay, minus alpha square. So minus alpha square is plus a square by 2s or uh, s correct k square by 4s square so if i substitute that in this equation then i will get phi tilde k is equal to 1 by root 2 pi integral minus infinity to infinity dx okay and i have e to the power minus a into x plus ik by 2a the whole square plus k square by 4a square Now remember this particular term does not have any k square by 4 a square term does not have any x. So I can actually take that out of this integral. That is 1 by root 2 pi e to the power minus k square divided by 4 a. 1 a will get cancelled with this k 4 a into integral minus infinity to infinity dx e to the minus a x plus i k by 2a okay so now i can uh, use the same trick okay to so let us say now i can set um, so let us say set a times x plus i k by 2a uh, a square root of a times this as some y. Okay, so that gives you dx is equal to dy divided by root k. Okay, and so in terms of this y, my phi tilde k will be equal to 1 by root 2 pi, 1 by root a e to the minus k square by 4a and integral minus infinity to infinity dy e to the minus y square. But what is this one? This is basically root pi. Okay, so then I have this is equal to 1 by root 2a 
that root pi and this root pi will cancel into e to the minus k square by 4a. So this is our phi tilde. And notice that uh, the Fourier transform of a Gaussian is a Gaussian, which you might have learned in Fourier transform. So we started with e to the minus ax square, and then now we have uh, the relation that e to the minus k square by 4a. Okay, so this is, uh, sorry, I think I have to, I have to keep this A everywhere. So it's not one by root two pi, it's A by root two pi. So this one, I have to carry this A, this pi tilde A here. But you can remember this A is given by this quantity. So 2A by and A is equal to 2A by 5. So that will give you 1 by 2A pi to the power 1 by 2. Let us carry this. Okay. So now, um, now that we have found out phi k, okay, so we can now write down okay. so now we can write down the initial. Initial wave function initial wave function in terms of in terms of stationary states can now be written. And as uh, I thought, I think I called it as phi of x comma zero is equal to one over root two pi integral minus infinity to infinity pi tilde of k into e to the power i k x. Now I have found out what is phi tilde k. So let us try to put that in here. So that is equal to 1 over root 2 pi and 1 over e a pi to the power 1 by 4. That is, I have included the value of a also. And integral minus infinity to infinity to the minus k square by 4a into e to the power i k x okay so this is your phi of x g now uh, the last step is that we want to find out what is the time evolution of this state okay so to find Phi of x comma t. Note, note that phi of x comma t is equal to e to the power minus i by h cross into t into the Hamiltonian acting on phi of x comma t. So, which is equal to e to the power minus i by h cross t e, into Hamiltonian acting on one by root two pi, one by two a pi, so one by four. 
Okay, so these are anyway constants, minus infinity to infinity, e to the minus k square by 4a, e to the power i k x. Thus, this is your phi of x. So this entire thing is your phi of x zero as expressed in terms of uh, linear combination of stationary states. Now look at this, h is a differential operator in x. So this will act only, it will act only on this function. Okay. These are the stationary states. And we know, so we know that e to the minus i by h cross e h acting on e to the i k x is equal to e to the i k x into e to the minus i by h cross very mm. case where e k is energy eigenvalues of a free part is perfect. So now we are uh, we are ready. So phi of x comma t is equal to one over. So let me call this entire thing as some some constant b. Let me call this. I don't want to write it again and again. So let me call this as b. So this is b into integral minus infinity to infinity e to the minus k square by 4a into e to the i k x into e to the minus i by h cross into t into h cross square k square by k. I have to do this integral. If I do this integral, then I will be okay. So then I will be ready to uh, uh, that will be my answer. Just doing this, we are just one integral away from the answer. So first let us look at this integral. So this is equal to b minus infinity to infinity uh, e to the minus k square into 1 by 4a, OK? And I have um, this h cross here will cancel with this h here. And k square is taken out. So uh, plus i t h cross divided by 2a. So minus k square into this quantity plus i k x. OK, so just for simplicity, so let us call this 1 by 4a plus i p h cross divided by 2m okay, to be some kind of an alpha. Just to say that it is a function of time, we will call this as an alpha. So I have this equation in that case is phi of x comma t is equal to some constant b in the integral minus infinity to infinity e to the minus alpha t k square. So can pull out a minus sign minus i k into x. Now I have to do this um, squaring, square, square, uh, completing the squares once again. So let us write root alpha of t into k, root alpha of t into k minus uh, this whole square minus ikx 
Okay, I want to write this as root alpha k plus some beta, the whole square minus beta square. Okay, so that is equal to alpha k square plus 2 root alpha k beta. 2 root alpha k beta is what we will have. That means uh, so I will have so comparing this I will have beta is equal to beta is equal to I um, I have to put a minus sign here so that will be minus okay so this is equal to uh, I x by 2 root alpha I x by 2 root alpha. So uh, we can write this integral as b integral minus infinity to infinity into the minus root alpha a minus i x by 2 root alpha the square. And of course, you have this minus beta square. Okay, so minus beta square, this minus and this minus, this minus and that minus will become plus. So that if I write separately, I have e to the minus x square by 4 alpha square. Oh, sorry, 4 alpha. e to the minus x square by 4 alpha e. Now this term e to the minus x square by 4 alpha does not depend on uh, k and hence I can pull that out of the integral. So that is equal to b e to the minus x square by 4 alpha into integral minus infinity to infinity e to the minus root alpha k minus i x by 2 root alpha whole square e. So now you can set uh, root alpha k minus i x by 2 root alpha as some y. So d k will become d y by root alpha. Okay. So then you have b by root alpha e to the minus x square by 4 alpha into integral minus infinity to infinity e to the minus y square e y. So this is basically root pi. Correct? So that is equal to uh, b root pi by root alpha e to the minus x square by 4 hours. Yeah. So now you notice that um, So we have to come back and then see what this B is. So my phi of x comma t is equal to one by root two phi into one by two a i to power 1 by 4, that is my b, into root pi by root alpha. Now root alpha is 1 by 4a plus i uh, cross into t by m. 
and e to the power r exponential minus x square divided by 4 into 1 by 4a plus i h cross t so you can see that there is an x dependence and there is a t dependence okay so this pi will cancel with this one And okay, so this is uh, basically the wave function. Okay, so this is the wave function. Now you can see that um, if I ask what is what is the so if you please compare this wave function, we started with. So we started started with uh, y of x comma zero which is equal to we have to see what was a e power minus a x square sir a e power minus a x yeah, yeah, that I remember. I was trying to see what is the uh, two a by pi. So it is two a by pi to the power one by four into exponential of minus k. So we started with uh, Gaussian, okay? But uh, here the Gaussian has. Uh, for example, if I ask, uh, if I ask, what is modulus of pi of x comma zero the square? That will be equal to two a by pi under square root exponential of minus two a x square. Okay. Now, usually a Gaussian will always have uh, some. Some kind of an expression. Okay, so Gaussian will have an expression like this. So, for it, so this is also a Gaussian. So remember, this is a Gaussian. Now, if you ask what is pi of x comma t mod square, okay, so if you ask what is pi of x comma t mod square, then uh, we will have pi star and this one, right? So let us write this as 1 by root 2 to 1 by 2a pi to the power 1 by 4, or this will be square, okay, or half. And then I have 1 by this and its its complex conjugate. So that will give me one by four a square plus h bar square t square by four m square. So this is the expression for this. And then I will have exponential of minus x square divided by four into 1 by 4a plus i h t by 2m and then of course you will have an exponential which is a negative of that which i will write it as minus x square divided by 4 into 1 by 4a minus i h t x bar 3 by 2 Okay, so this is this one will be one will be equal to one by two and one by two a pi 
to power half and this quantity 1 by 4a plus a star square p square by 4m square into exponential we can see that this x square uh, i can take uh, I can take that 1 by 4 outside, let's say minus minus x square by 4, that part we can pull out. And then I have uh, 1 by 4a minus ih bar t by 2m plus 1 by 4a uh, plus ih t ih bar t by 2m divided by the multiplication of uh, this one that is 1 by 4a square 1 by 4a the square plus uh, h bar square p square by 4m square now this term will cancel okay so we will have We have this so well, let me simply call this okay uh, let me just write it for once one by four a square plus h bar square p square by four m square do exponential of um minus x square by 16a uh okay one plus one two eight a eight a into we have this one by four a whole square plus uh h bar square e square by so uh, you can see that uh, if you if you go back to this and I want to write it in the following fashion that is exponential of uh, so this this factor I can write it as minus x square by 1 by 2a. Okay, so this is related to width. Okay, x square by uh, 1 by 2a. So this is related to width. Now this 1 by 2a, if I can call this sigma, of zero as one by three. Okay. Now, if I want to call this as sigma at t, so I can say that sigma of t is equal to sigma zero by four. So one by two a is um, so one by uh, let's say this is your sigma that is eight a one by four a square plus this bar square t square by four a. But we have seen that sigma 0 is equal to 1 over r. We can write down from here 2a is equal to 1 by sigma r. 2a is equal to 1 by sigma
So basically, it is uh, you can say that the sigma of t is equal to eight a into uh, sigma of zero by two. Okay, the whole square plus h bar square p square by 4m square. So basically what happens at t equal to 0, this will be simply sigma of we are missing some a somewhere. Yeah, I think um, if I take if I take this expression and I put t is equal to zero, if I take this expression and I put t is equal to zero, then I have uh, one by x square by one by a. Correct. So that is that so is fine. So there's a eight a outside. You can take that as uh, one by sigma uh, zero, four by one by sigma zero. Then it gets cut with the sigma square. I think. Um, yeah. So and the t part will become zero at t equal to zero. So we'll get back sigma zero. Okay, I think that's correct. So this is right as four by sigma zero. Uh, that is four into two a. That is equal to this. And then I have sigma zero square by four plus sigma square p square by four m square. So if I put p is equal to zero. Implies your sigma of t becomes sigma. Okay, so the equation is showing you that um, that you started with some. So let's say that uh, let's assume that this is your uh, this is your phi of x comma t. And let's say this is your x. Okay, so now at uh, time t equal to zero, this is your time axis. Okay, this is the time axis. At time t is equal to zero, let's say that you have a Gaussian, some kind of a width. Okay, so this width is basically your sigma of zero. This is related to one over two. Now, if you are uh, trying to take what happens as your time increases at a later time this actually has a spread okay, so this is at this is time t equal to zero this is at some time t. and at a much later it has a more broader spread this some time t is a t1 something t greater than t and so on. So this expression is what gives rise to spread of the wave pattern. So a Gaussian wave bracket, uh, its width will spread. In the limit t tending to infinity, what will happen is that it will become uh, uniform. Okay, so will become uniform. Okay, so that means you are. Uh, so if you are, if you are talking about um, the spread is also related to this delta x. So sigma is same as delta x. Uncertainty in x. So uncertainty in x uh, keeps increasing. So the spread in the wave packet keeps increasing. So in the limit t tending to infinity, then you will see that uh, 
delta x goes to infinity. So this is how the wave packets uh, are analyzed. So I told you that uh, in the beginning we had uh, we had a, an expression that uh, if you have a non-stationary state, the time evolution of a non-stationary state can be obtained by expanding the wave function in terms of the stationary states. And that is what I did it in this case. But in this case, I have to uh, I have to do this in such a way that uh, we have integrations, not the summation. Okay, so generally recall this thing that I said that um, if if uh, if your uh, if pi n if pi n are stationary states if for a, for a general problem Final of stationary states, and if pi of zero is a non-stationary state, then we have two things. One is psi of zero can be expressed as sum over n. Cn by n. Okay, this is the discrete case. Okay, R. So this is basically discrete. If they are continuous case, that is like what we have done here, then your uh, whatever that psi k of zero, or I would have written this as k of 0 can be written as integral integral uh, so you are essentially going to uh, write it in the following fashion so that means what I am doing in continuous case is that I write my k of 0 as an identity multiplied by k of 0 Okay, so let me write this k of zero as an integral okay. um, so integral of for each k uh, sorry, I think we are generally talking about so in continuous case continuous case. So your pi of zero has to be written in terms of not a in terms of an integral over dk because the sum over n is like integral over dk. Okay, and then we have some coefficient which I am calling it as pi tilde k. This will be a function. So pi tilde k is like your cn into the stationary states k. Now this k are like this, this one. Okay, so that is the difference. Okay, and this is the first thing. First thing is you expand. In discrete case, you expand like this. In the continuous case, you expand in this way. Now we have a you have a situation that um, so phi n of t is equal to e to the minus i by h cross e n p phi n. So the time evolution of a stationary states in discrete case is like this, which is also true. Okay, also, your k of t is equal to e to the minus i by h cross e k t 
this is also true for continuous case. Now, once we know this, so these are the two inputs. Okay, so this is the input. That is, first, any non-stationary state can be expressed as a linear combination of stationary states. And second input is the evolution of stationary state is like this. Now, combining these two inputs, you can write down i of t, uh, i of t can be written as sum over n, e n, e to the minus i by h cross e e n, oh, i n. So, we have to evaluate this sum. Evaluate this sum. Or sometimes you may just leave it like that. If you have no way of evaluating it, you can leave it like that. On the other hand, your um, psi of t in the continuous case is obtained like this integral. I have written down the integral in this way, right? So uh, dk pi tilde k e to the minus i by h cross e e k. So, evaluate this integral. That is what we did in the previous case. Evaluate this integral. Okay. So, that's all. So, this is basically using this 1 and 2 to find uh, time evolution. Time evolution of uh, arbitrary State. That's all. So that is the most important thing of uh, <coughs> what we are doing. Okay, so if you are understanding this, then I think uh, more or less in all problems, this is what we would have to do. So, so in since this is if this is clear, then in the entire course, so the objective. objective of the course is the following to find to find stationary state that means to solve this for a given okay. for a given h okay so you may you may take h to be equal to p square by 2m for a free particle as we have seen or you can take h is equal to e square by 2m plus some constant potential like we have seen in many other uh, problems that we have done or h is equal to e square by 2m plus of m omega square x square or your h is equal to uh, p square by 2m plus some central potential okay. or you can talk about e square by 2m plus or minus e square by 4 pi epsilon naught r the hydrogen atom okay. and like that uh, so depending on all these cases that you will try to solve h psi is equal to e psi and find stationary states. And once you find stationary states, then so some of, for some of these problems you can find them exactly. Okay, so if we cannot find we cannot find um, solution for 
h psi is equal to e psi exactly then we use some approximate techniques so some of the approximate techniques is perturbation perturbation theory or variational variational method wkb approximation so the important part is that uh, this is what actually we do in our uh, syllabus but then when you go from 1d to 3d so this is one dimensional problems and you have three dimensional problems so there is an important uh, uh, thing that we have to learn that is angular momentum theory angular momentum theory so this will be very important because the learning of this theory will help you to understand various other um, subjects later so i want you to i want you to to have a overall perception of the course that is why i am summarizing it there is nothing no new concepts that will come in the way essentially we are going to use only the same superposition same evolution same uh, <coughs> collapse the same postulates we are going to use but sometimes depending on your eigen value problem maybe there will be some mathematical difficulties in solving the equations that some otherwise it is more or less the stage is completely set so we are going to only uh, touch upon the same concepts in every problem again and again and again okay so how do we choose linear superposition how do you construct wave packets and how do you evolve wave packets in time and for that how stationary states are used so this is largely the scope of the course of course i will try to do one more uh, thing uh, that is the time evolution that we have talked about today uh, are in the during the postulates is only a small part of the story but you could have actually uh, thought about time evolution in a slightly different fashion for example let's say that uh, i will at least mention one more so let's say that we have your uh, let's say that you have schrodinger equation i h cross rho psi of p e dot t is equal to h i of t and we have written down that formally the solution is that psi of t is equal to e to the minus i by h cross e h uh, acting on psi of t okay and if uh, if a is a hermitian operator a is a hermitian operator a is a hermitian operator then um, the expectation value of a as a function of time is obtained by taking expectation value of a with respect to time dependent a psi of okay expectation value of a is obtained as expectation value of a with respect to psi of now this particular 
uh, this particular treatment is generally called as Schrodinger Schrodinger picture. Okay, Schrodinger picture. And what Schrodinger picture talks about is that uh, states evolve in time. This evolve in time uh, as per Schrodinger equation. This evolve in time as per Schrodinger equation. Now operators, operators are independent. Operators are independent of time. Now, uh, we have some similar thing in classical mechanics also. So, parallel, parallel case in classical mechanics is the following. So, you have a state represented by Q, comma P, a point in the phase space. And the Hamilton's equations of motion, Q dot is equal to uh, partial derivative of H with P, and P dot is equal to minus partial derivative of H with Q. Okay, so you can solve these equations. It is, these equations are like evolution equations. So you get Q of P and P of P. Correct. Then uh, a, any property, any property is designated as a dynamical function. Um, so at time t, at time t, the property is f of q of t and p of t. You find out what is q of t and p of t and put that in this expression. So that means the evolution of properties is governed by the evolution of the state vector or the state point in the case. Okay, but we can also think in terms of so let us just because we are now introducing the Schrodinger picture, so let me call this as S subscript S and this also as. Um, the Schrodinger picture S, and this as S. Now, suppose if I write this one as pi of zero e to the power i by h cross p h, because in the adjoint it will be plus sign, and a s e to the minus i by h cross p h. Psi of zero. Now I can as well define a new operator which depends on time and then keep the states independent of time. So let us define a h of t as an operator like a h of t is equal to e to the power my uh, e to the power i by h cross e h. And AS, AS is the Schrodinger operator, which is independent of that. minus i by h cross. And suppose I ask what is EAH of P by dt? EAH of P by dt, if I ask this question. So that will be first. I will take derivative of this. That is, um, i by h cross e 
uh, i by h cross into h into e to the power i by h cross e h a s e to the minus i by h cross e h into minus so first i will do an operation with respect to this this is a product rule okay so this depends on time and this also depends on time in the next term i will have uh e to the power i by h cross e h and a s e to the minus i by h cross e h into minus i by h cross so this is basically this gives you i by h cross i by h cross into h a h minus a h or in other words i can write this i can write this this is, this is equal to i by h cross into the hamiltonian commutator with a h or i can write this as minus 1 by i h cross and i absorb this minus sign inside and write this as commutator of a h with so i can write down that uh, the evolution of the operator ah is governed by governed by this equation ih cross dah of t by dt is equal to commutator of ah of t this equation is called heisenberg equation this is called heisenberg equation of t and this picture this picture we call it as heisenberg picture heisenberg picture where operators evolve in time and state is independent this is uh, complementary to schrodinger picture and operator is evolve in time according to what is called heisenberg picture okay so one can also see a parallel in classical mechanics parallel in classical mechanics is something like this. suppose i have a property which is called f of q bar t now you ask what is ef dt is equal to to f to q dt dot plus to f to q dt dot but you go back and then write down q dot and p dot in terms of the hamilton's equation then you have rho f to q rho h to p minus rho f to p rho h to p so this is nothing but the poisson bracket of f so the property can be evaluated by solving this differential equation with the poisson bracket so poisson bracket and commutator this uh, play a similar role 
whatever role that poison bracket plays in classical mechanics commutator will play in quantum mechanics so this is a parallel in classical mechanics this is called heisenberg picture now pictures are only a matter of convenience we want to solve a given problem in schrodinger picture or heisenberg picture it is only a matter of convenience now i will show you for example the same problem that i have done today the free particle evolution i will show you if i use heisenberg picture the same result what i have got here i will get it much easily so that i will show in the next class so you can see that based on the convenience you can choose any one of these picture the final result doesn't depend on which picture you use it is like choosing the coordinates for example you have some spherically symmetric problem and if you choose cartesian coordinates you will be doing a lot of hard work and maybe equations become very tough so you have to intelligently choose your coordinate system you have to intelligently choose your basis you have to intelligently choose your picture in which you are trying to do calculations so that your job is uh, less okay. there is another picture uh, called interaction picture and that is largely used if your hamiltonian itself depends on time so far we have succinctly assuming that the hamiltonian does not depend on time if hamiltonian depends on time even this cannot be written so we are able to write this implies we assume we assume that h is independent of time i don't know if i made this statement earlier but if i did not make it please keep in mind that i can't even write this if it is independent of time because remember hamiltonian is an operator and an operator uh, if it depends on time at different times it will be a different operator and maybe it doesn't commute with itself i mean hamiltonian at two different times may not commute so then there will be a problem we cannot have this kind of a structure okay so that will give some additional problem so it is a uh, next level of difficulty that if hamiltonian has time dependent uh, terms that means if there are interactions which are changing with time the most notable interaction is that if you have a charged particle and it is interacting with an electromagnetic field and your electric and magnetic fields are changing with time and so are their vector and scalar potentials and hence your hamiltonian will have a term which depends on time so in such cases your time evolution uh, is uh, in some intelligent way it splits and then the time dependent part will evolve in one particular fashion and time independent part of the hamiltonian will govern the evolution of some other uh, quantities so in interaction picture both state vectors as well as operators both of them evolve in time in schrodinger picture only state vectors evolve in heisenberg picture only operators evolve in interaction picture both of them evolve so i will also show you after we discuss a little bit about uh, heisenberg picture and then solve this problem in heisenberg picture to in the next class so i will stop here we have a question hello sir i yes. i have a question mm. that uh, gaussian wave packet is a, a minimum uncertainty wave packet among all other wave packets Uh, is it only possible when time is equal to zero, sir? As uh, time increases, its uh, uncertainty is also increased. Uh, yes, uncertainty is uh, so that Gaussian wave packet uh, at time t equal to zero has the minimum uncertainty. Otherwise, it it can change. Okay, sir. Sir, la last time I have gave. A an exercise mm -hmm. uh, in the fourth system i have some some difficulty in calculating energy sir can you explain it uh which uh, last class is it in last class sir you asked to calculate 
एनर्जी डिक्रीजिंग ऑर्डर इक्वेशन Mm-hmm. So you you have solved the problem of uh, so you have got the energy values by looking at uh, the transcendental equation. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. From the graphical method, I have calculated. So then you found that uh, B uh, B's energy is highest. Yes, sir. B's energy is highest. Okay. So. Uh, <clears throat> i do not know but that probably is not correct because uh, one can make a very qualitative uh, simple argument like this so for example let's say that um, so we are talking only about the ground state right so let's say that i have a box uh, which has infinity both sides and the ground state wave function will be something like this. there is no node in the ground state wave function the ground state wave function will be like this now basically it is a sine wave correct so it's a sine wave this is a half sine wave so that means this is zero to a okay uh, so the zero to a the lambda by 2 is basically a here so if this wave has a wavelength then the lambda by 2 is equal to a correct now on the other yes, hand sir. if you take um, you take uh, something like this then this is zero and a okay but then what happens is this is also a sine function but then it will not go to zero at this point so basically it will be something like this. it will go and then after that there is a different form of the wave function but then what happens if you imagine that you are extending this the half wavelength will be longer than this correct so let us call this as lambda a so lambda b by 2 will be greater than a correct so because this is extending it this is not going to zero here so this is extending so you have a longer wavelength for the this this, this kind of a box and if you are looking at a box like this you are looking at a box like this then this is going to be kind of a same thing here and this is going to extend in this direction also it is going to be extend in this direction also. so that is basically this is greater than lambda a now if you call this lambda by C, lambda a by C, so that's what i mean So if I call lambda by c, or lambda c by two, okay. So this is even greater than lambda b by. Two. Okay, so this much is fine. Now suppose if you consider uh, well like this. Now what happens? So th- this part, this part will be somewhat same as this. Whereas here, it will be a lower value. So you will have a wave function like this because this is higher momentum. If it is infinity, it is it is going to be no distance here. So that means your lambda d by two will be smaller than lambda c by two. Will be smaller than lambda c by two, but it will be. greater than but it will be greater than lambda b by 2 so lambda d by 2 will be greater than lambda b by 2 because this is not infinity but this is larger than this so this is about the wavelengths now once you understand this wavelength business now you know wavelengths 
are uh, inside it is a free particle so wavelength is inversely proportional to the momentum and energy is proportional to the momentum so this will be inversely proportional to the momentum correct okay. so if you see yes. uh, your lambda a is smallest okay and then then you have lambda b then you have lambda d and then you have lambda c okay so this is the order in terms of this lambdas and your energies are exactly in the reverse so your e 0 a is greater than e 0 b is greater than e 0 d is greater than e 0 So yes, this argument is uh, quite general. So if you have, if you are not getting this, that means there may be some problem in the calculation or in the graphical analysis. Yes. Sir, I am getting uh, E A uh, less than E B less than twice pi square s cut square divided by m l square, and another result uh, E C less than pi square s cut square divided by twice m l square. So in this. Uh, so probably i have yeah. not uh, compared them uh, yeah, yeah the point is if you say there is only an upper limit or lower limit then the limit will not tell you a comparison right yes sir both of them are less than this but how do we compare these two yes sir that is the uh, so sir uh, can we can do in this way yeah, yeah. thank you sir that is what i was telling you that if you look at that book by ap french so there are many problems like this where you have to uh, you have to verify by a qualitative argument like this many answers you can get for those problems by a simple qualitative argument in fact this is what i i am calling that you should develop what is called a quantum thinking because even though we are doing quantum mechanics most of the times we will have that particle particle like picture in our mind and any conclusion that you are getting through that particle like picture in mind will become wrong in quantum mechanics so you have to you have to train yourself to not to consider a particle like picture in mind when you are doing or trying to argue out qualitatively in, in problems like this yes sir excuse me sir Yeah. Sir, I have a doubt, and I think I need more clarification at some points. So, in today's lecture, sir, first is like, what exactly is this sigma t, sir? And how we are getting it? Like, we got we got this expression a t one by four a square a square t square by four m. So, how we are getting this expression, or how we are defining sigma t in this? No, I am simply in this calculation. I am naming it as sigma of zero, and naming this as sigma. Of In, so, in but a, then a, why in a gaussian in a gaussian wave packet or in a gaussian function sigma is obtained as a uh, full width at half maximum right that is the spread of your wave packet or what you call as the standard deviation in in uh, in, a, in a error error analysis language so these are all uh kind of uh, same same notation i am using so that is why i am calling it as sigma i could have called it as delta x also okay so sir then uh, like i need to further understand that how why this uh, the uh, this kind of deviation is getting decreases with time like as in the graph uh, we see like the wave packets are getting less deviated wave packet is actually spreading right the uh, the width of the wave packet is increasing as time increases so why that is happening sir that is happening because uh, you see the point is that uh, when uh, <clears throat> so let's say that uh, so something like this
so it is something like this you um, so suppose you have uh, you have let's say phi of x comma 0 and as a function of x so let's say you have a very highly localized gaussian wave packet like this now to get this to get this uh you need you need large number of uh waves super waves that means we require e power i k x many case a okay, different different case okay with some kind of a weight this weight and this weight is what we call as phi tilde f okay so we are going to have. so that means to get a very localized uh, this one you require many many such waves okay now as you as you go to as you go to uh, different times that means we are increasing this width that means the number of waves that are required to make this kind of a wave packet is less r for many of these wave packets uh, for many of these plane waves the coefficients are becoming smaller and smaller and over a long time if you see this is more or less uh, the probability is constant or psi will be simply some kind of a single wave okay so that means there will be one dominant plane wave which will be the wave function in the limit t tending to Uh, t tending to infinity so that is what is or in other words we can think in terms of a picture like this so let's say this is your x and this is your k okay now suppose let's say this many uh this many k's are used to construct a wave function like this. then this wave function will be spread in this particular so if this is your delta x and this will be your delta k okay now you want to have so delta x and delta k okay delta x and delta k uh cannot cannot go to zero okay so that means if you want to have a very small value of delta x then you should have large number of uh so large number of them or in other words if you have very large value of delta x then it is sufficient to have a small uh region of delta k so delta k is small and this is your delta x so like that so what is happening is that uh, uh so a superposition initially it is superposition of several waves now as you go in time uh the, there is a <clears throat> there is a spread of this wave packet that means uh the less and less number of waves are superposed okay and that's how the free particle evolution uh can be understood okay sir so i have another question so what exactly is this phi tilde k is it state or it is a eigen value because when you saw the analogous i got confused like when you saw that uh, phi k is analogous to cn correct so phi k is just essentially the uh, co coefficient of expansion so is it working as an eigen value no it's not an eigen value it is just a coefficient it's, it's like cn so i am going to expand this psi of x0 in terms of case momentum eigen states okay so this is a coefficient of expansion in this case of course there are energy eigen states understood. Hmm. understood sir and sir i have another question sir so when we talked about the extended normalization that dirac form in a dirac form mm -hmm. 
so sir what does why we are taking like when we are integrating we are taking psi k at x dx and then psi multiplied with psi k because we are not actually normalizing so, it to 1 Hello. I couldn't hear you. I couldn't hear you, so I'll try to say whatever I could hear. So this delta function is defined only with two arguments, right? So you have this is your x-axis. There is some x prime at which the whole mass is concentrated. This is how it is defined. Okay, so I don't have in this generalized sense. I don't have something equal to one. I can say that. uh you are uh, so if you if you take if you take uh, psi k of x prime r and psi k of x dx so this i can write it as delta of x minus x prime so we can i call this as delta of x minus x prime so what happens as x goes to x prime can only be understood using this delta function and this is not equal to 1 only the integral of this one is equal to 1 is equal to 1 so this is a generalized sense in which we are normalizing that is why we have to use two different things so what is the basic principle behind this uh, like uh, like earlier we when we talk uh, box pic picture then we had idea that okay in a while loop that uh, we should find particle somewhere much that's why we are taking one but what is the basic principle or re reason why we are taking that is equal to uh, some delta function that is uh, uh, if you uh, if you if you say this that is if you are if you are taking your wave function Psi k of x as one by root two pi into e to the power i k x, and then take uh, take integral one by two pi into e to the power i k x minus x prime uh, d k. Then you will get delta of x minus. Okay. so uh, the the point is that there are two things that are involved this is one is uh, orthogonality orthogonality and second is this delta function normalization of course i am going to do this integral from minus infinity to plus infinity so whenever we have this uh, this kind of a situation so a particle may not be exactly like this e to the power i k x okay, so this e to the power i k x is basically this 1 by root 2 pi uh, e to the power i k x for different values of k okay k continuous this serves as a complete orthonormal basis a okay, complete orthonormal basis for the hilbert space if we choose we choose this uh, such normalization so our aim is to have a coordinate basis okay if we have a coordinate basis maybe the particle will not be having this wave function you will have a particle the particle's wave function may be something else but that can be expanded in terms of this and this turns out to be an eigen state of the hamiltonian for a free particle not only that uh, you see that uh, in many computational quantum mechanics cases for example when people try to use something called density functional theory 
to find out uh, 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 to to solve many particle systems they will use this plane wave basis because this basis uh, will satisfy uh, the basis i mean this set satisfies the basis condition any arbitrary state can be expanded in terms of this basis so it will be it will be used as a basis and if you normalize it like this it serves like a basis maybe it is not directly related to a free particle but a free particle wave function can be normalized and that can be expressed in terms of this complete orthonormal basis here orthonormal in the sense of dirac delta function because both k and x are continuous in this case so whenever you have a continuous basis okay so the dirac delta function normalization is necessary understood sir so it's like we are like taking the principle that we should be orthonormalize the base we should choose orthonormalized basis in order to it normalize Okay, so in the previous time. example, I have in the previous example I have this uh, Gaussian wave function given. So when I normalize it, that one I have normalized it that without any problem because that's a that's a wave packet. So the particle will actually the wave function of the particle will be some kind of a wave packet. So this plane wave is just a component of that wave packet. Understood. Thank you. So, yeah. Sir, uh, about the decoherence, I have two issues. Uh, so the decoherence, uh, like, is it is of a not the decoherence, a widening of the wave function mm -hmm. that we saw, the psi x. Mm -hmm. So it is, f it is the widening of the width of a, a wave packet which represents a particle. Mm -hmm. So what does that mean for the particle propagating? That we are seeing that it is widening with time. So, how does it affect so, the? Basically, the particle, uh, uh, the, the probability that particles location can be anywhere in the x-axis is, uh, in fact, from from a localized particle, it just becomes a delocalized particle. So that means in in the limit e tending to infinity, it is like every it can be there anywhere x-axis with the equal probability. Okay, so that is what is happening. That means, so you can think in terms of, um, so suppose if the particle is, you start with the particle in some small cell and then you just keep it as a free particle and then the particle can actually spread in all, uh, in both the directions. And then the probability is non-zero for longer and longer regions on the x-axis as time increases. Okay, sir. And uh, so this, uh, we can see this, uh, this uh, delta k into delta x that you saw, uh -huh. you said that it should be like a, a constant throughout the time the change is happening. So no, it's, it's not necessarily constant. So this, AD, so this AD under the curve should be preserved. Like, is it area, the under the area under the curve is the normalization that will be preserved. Yes, sir. the right hand picture that you showed, the you have marked the gray area, right? Oh, this uh, yes, delta yes. K delta. Uh -huh. Yes, sir, yes. So it's like a uh, it's a uncertainty principle, right, sir? Yeah, yeah. So, sir, uh, why is uh, like nature pushing it like this so that like we get a uh, small delta k and large delta x? Like, shouldn't it be symmetric in some way? Well, Why are we is, getting this result? Sir? That is because uh, uh, this is a free particle. It is not that this result is true for uh, any other problem. Since it is a free particle, okay. So we have uh, Hamiltonian in terms of only momentum. That means momentum is a constant of motion, correct? So, so that means ultimately what happens is that all your uh, uh, time dependence is actually taking from many momentum states to one momentum state. So ultimately, you will have one momentum state. So can you explain that once? 
Any is, momentum states to one. So what does see? If you have only one momentum state, then your probability will be uniform, right? Yes. Sir. So your probability is from a Gaussian to uniformity is becoming. So that means probability is same everywhere. That means there is only one one wave associated with that. But to start with, we have many waves making this wave packet. Now, as you go uh, over time, sm smaller and smaller waves will be making this wave packet because delta x is becoming larger and larger, and delta k becomes smaller and smaller. And then, in the limit t tending to infinity, there is only one wave that makes. This wave packet. So, sir, since the problem itself is defined in terms of p, like momentum, and okay. since we get momentum equal probability, like a priori thing, only when the wave, pa wave packet is spread. So that's okay. why it is forming like this. Yes. Okay. Hello, sir. Yeah. Sir, I I have a doubt in the inner product. Ah, uh, sir. Uh, there, what is the difference between a linear function or linear functional and non-linear functional? Uh, I have see. I am calling it as a, li a linear functional because um, it it satisfies that linear property. That is, uh, if you are taking If you are taking an inner product of, uh, so let's say I have some vector v, and I take an inner product with this vector v, so this is a functional. This is a functional. Why? Because uh, this operation u will take a vector and then give a scalar, right? This will be a scalar. So that is the definition of a function. It will take vector as an input and gives out a scalar as an output. Now this is linear because if I take u versus alpha times v, then I will get alpha times u, or u times some v1 plus v2. Then I get u v1 plus u v. So these two properties are satisfied. So this is a linear function. So this is linear and this is function. Okay. Now, if okay, these two are not okay. satisfied, then that is non-linear function. Okay, sir. Okay. Sir. Yeah. Sir, I have uh, one doubt. Scroll up, sir. From where I will scroll up to that point where you wrote. Uh, <clears throat> uh, we know that uh, e bar i by h bar t h cap e bar i k x is equal to e bar i k x. That part. Sir. Just. Uh, Hello, sir. Periodic boundary condition. Uh, no, sir. The 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 point where we wrote that uh, to find the uh, phi of x t, that point in that problem where we solve this uh, free particle. There we yeah after you, the yeah. you anyway <laughs> asked your question because I have. Now, this has got closed, so I'll, it will take some time. But you can ask your question. Sir, there you wrote that e bar. We know that e bar minus i h bar t mm -hmm. h cap e bar mm -hmm. i k x is equal to e bar i k x into e bar minus i by h bar t e k. We have written this equation. Is this uh, from the fact that x i is equal to z, sir?
Ah, here, 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 here. We know that. Ah, so this is because uh, this is a stationary state evolution, no? So that is what I have written here. That, is, uh, that the, is that because of xi equal to e xi, sir? That's what I'm asking. Correct, correct. The stationary state. So because of that, wherever h is there, you can replace by e. So that I can put that e power minus i h bar t e k before e power i t x. No, sir. That's not ah, yeah, going to make yeah. h. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This ah. is just, they are just uh, functions. Ah. So that can be written that ah. way. That only I got a little bit confused. Sir, and one more point, sir. During the derivation, I think you made somewhere you, you left the square. I mean, you squared it twice so that that uh, b function has some. Uh, yes, sir. It's in the. It's in the de uh, denominator of denominator. Part. So denominator part. You have yes. taken square root and squared it, but again squared that. So you got that. Uh, uh, you scroll a little bit down. Sorry. Yeah, it's just a constant term, so it's not a like it's ah, not in the e to the power. It's just a no? constant. But there, I think you made that. Ah, yes, sir. Little bit scroll down, sir. Little bit scroll down. Sir. Little bit. Yeah, yes, sir. Hmm. Here that phi of x t square, uh, this uh, oh. one by here it is i h bar that will come, but you have taken it square again square. Phi of x t, sir. Ah, well, uh, so uh, uh, okay, 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 okay. So I think what you are saying is that this has uh, square root of that. Right, this is square root of. Ah, ah, ah. So yes, yes. Exactly. Sir. Yeah. There I was. That's all. Sir. These are the two things which I did. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Okay. So I think. Um, I think uh, I requested uh, Brilia to communicate that we will have a test next Friday, I mean, coming Friday. I hope we have got the information. And uh, the test, uh, it will be a multiple choice question till what we covered till the last class. So, So in the in the same our class time on Friday, we will have the test. So if there are no questions, then we can. Okay.